Eva Sunshine. I work as a senior scientist at the Technical University of Denmark in the Department of Bioengineering, and I work on marine microbial biodiscovery. So we are at the end of day one of the MIFIC conference and we are actually one of the lecture theatres that we were watching so many great lectures today and I'm here with Eva and I'm going to ask her a few questions to know more about her session and insights about her own research. So let's address the session first. How did it go? How did you feel going back to an in-person conference after quite a long time? Yeah, that was just some pits, so fantastic, right? I mean, uh, it is just really what I think science is also about to talk and exchange your ideas with people and it just works so much better in person. Mm -hmm. And can yeah. you tell us a little bit about what your session was about? Yeah, so the, the whole session was about uh, genome sequencing and analysis uh, and I think the talks were very nicely organized. So for example, uh, in front of me there was a speaker uh, talking about EFSA guidelines and then I presented our study on how we actually use the EFSA guidelines uh, to describe a marine mm -hmm. bacterium. And then you gave uh, your, uh, your own talk, right, on how you can use probiotics to address bacterial infections in aquaculture. Yes, exactly. So uh, we have been studying a, a marine bacterium called Phaeobacter and Hebans for uh, many years now in the group and also other scientists um, have been working on the strain because it has a very potent activity against fish pathogenic bacteria such as Ribiros. And uh, in this uh, review article that we just published now um, together with a scientist from, uh, from La de Mont, um, we actually made an review of this core knowledge on the strain and also um, made a safety assessment on the strain. So we, mm -hmm. for example, screened the genes for antibiotic resistant genes and so yeah. on. And is this uh, bacterium uh, found naturally in the environment? Exactly. That is one, really one of the, the benefits of the strains and um, also why we think it is a really good candidate to be a probiotic for aquaculture because it has originally been isolated from aquacultures mm -hmm. um, and occurs naturally in aquacultures. Yeah, and then how does the probiotic action come from? Where does it come from? It could actually be pinned down to uh, one very specific small secondary metabolite uh, called tripodithiatic acid. Mm -hmm. um, and that is really potent uh, against these fish pathogens. Okay. And then, like, in terms of, of resistance, because I know that um, there's a huge issue about using um, antibiotics in aquaculture because of the resistance that they, mm. um, the, they can develop afterwards. So, uh, does this occur also? Do you see resistance also de being developed under this compound? No, and this is also why we mm -hmm. found the strain so interesting. Okay. So uh, in our group, actually, there was a study or several studies actually undertaken to really try to cause resistant, resistance in um, fish pathogens. Uh, and it was just not possible, even if we you know, try to evolve them to be resistant um, to this compound, uh, this did not happen. Mm -hmm. So I, I see a lot of, you know, advantages when it comes to using this exactly, in, in yeah. a real setting. Yeah. Um, how close are you in, you know, y a applying this mm. um, yeah. this into the normal practice? Exactly. Um, yeah, this is really where this uh, collaboration with L'Allemand comes in um, because they are really interested in the strain and are currently working really hard to actually make this into a, a product, uh, which is great to see uh, this academic knowledge that has been developed over the past years to to get into an application. Mm -hmm. So I hope it will work out efficiently. Yeah, yeah, and it's great that you, you know, you can achieve such a collaboration and yes. both investigating also the science, but also in the application side of, uh, of this as well. Do you envision uh, that you can use it also in other, in other types except aquaculture? We are hoping for this that uh, you know, the more interesting candidates we obtain from the marine environment, be it, for example, specific microorganisms or also microbiomes or um, bioactive molecules, the more the you know attention they gain, that also people would see uh, a wider um, possibility of application. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, I'm now part of a big EU project called Marbles, where we uh, exploit the marine biodiversity. 
not only for aquaculture, but actually also for horticulture. Because, mm -hmm. you know, today we've heard a lot about using probiotics in humans, so it's actually mm. very interesting uh, that you also do research probiotics for aquaculture and I also here now on the environment. So yeah. it's great to see how research is evolving around this feed and food ingredient theme, theme and topic. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think we, we learn a lot from each other, right? Or uh, yeah, of course, there's a lot of resources uh, put towards I think human health, of course, we've seen that uh, over the past decades. Um, and so from an environmental side, it's really nice that we, you know, can go and see how they are doing things and then see how we can tra translate it this, this in other areas. Those were the questions that I prepared uh, for you today. Just I want to thank you again for, for your time here and I, uh, I hope you enjoy the final day of the conference tomorrow. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk. <laughs>